guys, <laughs> welcome back. So it turns out that this is actually week 13 of med school and last week was week 12, um, but I think I was just sick and I didn't check and well, here is week 13, the actual week 13, most interesting thing, week of med school. So this week we actually have our anatomy final. Um, that's going to be a lot. I think it's two tests. There's a in-house portion where the teachers write it and then there's a followed by an NBME portion where like it's like old step questions, which is like the big test that we take at the end of year two. Um, just for a little bit of reference, I think we have 70 questions in both. So 140 questions total on Friday. Um, so I'm studying for that currently, but the most interesting thing. So even though we have a lecture or we have a final on Friday, we had lectures through Tuesday. So we had, I think like, I don't know, maybe six lectures between Monday and Tuesday of new material. But something that's really cool that I learned is that um, so uh, T3 and T4 are like something that you kind of always hear about like with your thyroid, um, like, I don't really know what they stand for yet, but I know that like T3 and T4 come from your thyroid and I never kind of understood like why the three, why the four, like where are they getting that? Like is it a certain amount of carbons in it? Well, I have the answer, a partial answer, a good enough answer for me for now. But it turns out that um, your thyroid makes the T3 and T4 and it does so from iodine, iodide, iodine, iodide, one of those two. And what happens is that um, becomes a mono and a diversion and what happens is if two of the diversions you know pair up then it's T4 because two of two is four and then if it's a mono and a di that pair up then you get T3 because a mono is one and a di is two so then you get the three so it kind of makes a little more sense and like there's a little bit more of a base as to why T3 and T4 come from your thyroid uh, but also there's Sorry, I was taking my socks off. I just got back from anatomy lab. But in clinical skills this week, we did something. Okay, well, we learned how to do like a full like cardiac exam, you know, where they put the stethoscope um, like in four places. And we, as a group, we do this in small groups. We're all astonished when we just learned that on the stethoscope, right? Normal looking stethoscope. You like put it in your ears, you like feel, and then what happens is we had to do it, um, there's two sides, there's like the small side and the big side, I think it's the bell and the diaphragm, um, but what happens is we all like did it on the one side that we were supposed to do first, and then we um, flipped it around, because we're supposed to do it on the other side, and we're like, what? Like, we don't hear it, and they're like, well, did you flip it? And we're like, yes, we flipped it, like going from small to big, but no. <laughs> What happens is that this actually rotates. I don't know if you could hear that click. I'll do it again. There's like a little click at the end. So it's like very one way. So when you put these in your ear, if you like, oh, it sounds weird. Okay, but if you like tap on both sides, like this side is like way more powerful. I know that this is like the, I don't know, on side. But then, if you twist it, this side is going to be not, not much, but this side, so much more. So, I thought that was pretty cool because I had no idea that was a thing. But these things actually are like one way. So that was the most interesting of week 13, the actual week 13 of med school. See you guys next week.